Hey there, film fans. I'm Jeff. And I'm Dave, and welcome back to The Love of Cinema, a part in which we challenge one another to discuss movies, both new and old, with a strictly one positive... What? You always make fun of my speech impediment, dude. Seriously, you just... You fucked up the intro again. Like, Sorry, what were you saying, Dave? I don't know now. With a strictly People, positive critical eye. We are the Love of Cinema podcast. We drink and talk about movies... And we have to keep it positive. If we don't keep it positive, you hear the sound. That means we need to take a drink. We hope you drink along with us. So, pour yourselves a glass, sit back, and we're going to talk about a film that gives you the clap more time than the singles cruise. <laughs> ah, it's a joke the shot. Way. Pre-show shot, fellas. Okay. John looks different. Holy shit, John oh. looks different. And John, <laughs> new John, just took... The entire. I thought you just said you had a Manhattan. Yeah, that that was. Uh, you didn't pick up the cocktail glass by accident, did you? That was my pre-show T-Rex shot. This is my Manhattan. Yeah. <laughs> All right, friends. We have. Well, really quick, really quick. If you're new to the love of cinema, we keep it positive. We drink. We talk about movies. Uh, we try to keep it spoiler-free for a couple minutes. So if you haven't seen the movie, stick with us. And we always finish our episodes with recommendations of the week, which I want to plug early this episode because our guest, who we're about to introduce, sees so much shit. He has. He had a good covid recently which caused him to watch a lot of movies he's a physical media fan he's a writer <laughs> and i if you're looking and you say what how did they talk about this for that long half of the episode length is matt talking about all the shit he saw because i want you to go ham on this people please welcome back to the podcast from the matt and mark movie podcast recently trending all over the world we have matt gilbert matt welcome back to the show thank you love of cinema yes I am sitting in for John. I wish I had John's luscious locks. We but all do. I don't. We all do. I'm just a balding guy here <laughs> with a T-Rex shot glass yeah. and a Manhattan. That's all I got for you. <laughs> Wait, I'm proud of you because you still have enough on your head where you, you're you usually at the phase where you just don't talk about it. Yeah, I can fake it from the front, but in the back. Ooh, that's right. Out. You try to shoot, for, shoot from below. I hit that moment because yeah, like, right. I, I don't know whether he knows, but I do get a little bit of growth still around here. And I've hit that moment where... Like you're shaving the sides, it's like zzz, 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 and you can get to the middle, and the clippers get ominously yeah. fucking silent. We just lost all of our. <laughs> we, just, <laughs> we just lost all of our younger listeners. They um, love the youth vote. <laughs> Gen Z People, loves us. What are you talking about? We your love, TikTokies we love having, just flew out. <laughs> we love having Matt. Matt, really quick. So we're going to talk about all the stuff you've been watching. I just Elon us. Um, I would love for you to do two things really quick. Can you please go ahead and plug your show? Of course, a lot of our friends know you really well. But also, I want to know a little bit more about your writing because you've been posting about your Stranger Things book and Hawkins and such. Oh, yeah. Just tell me just a little pitch because if, if people know you and know your show, they know you from our Troma episode. Uh, I believe you're on our Space Jam episode. You have to have been on something else. You're wearing the Troma shirt. I'm representing Tromaville proudly. We did Toxic Avenger with Troma. you, and it was so great to have you on. But I would love to hear a little bit about your writing, too. And we'll know all about your movie watching. People, I promise, stay till the end of this episode and listen to this guy talk about the movies. And you and Dave watch the same movies, so I'm excited to see you guys yes. geek out of it. Yeah, actually, our, our, our Troma like episode, Dave off with Dave. Our Troma yeah. episode was hilarious because it was it's worth so watching just for the look on his face because we went debate style, and I was <laughs> forced to be negative. Yeah. And I, right. I didn't want to be negative, but I really committed to the pit. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's I it. didn't realize my first time out was fucking night court in this show. It was like I was out there fighting for my life, just defending oh, Robert Kelly the on crumbled. the stand. That was the way they could go. Like, Luckily, with the menu this week, that no fantastic debate. film that just came out that we're going to talk about, you're not going to have to do that. But click, please, quick, yes, plug your show and tell yes, me a little bit about I'm your from, writing. Yeah, I'm from the Matt and Mark movie show. Um, Mark, my co-host, has been on the show several times. He's broken the record, I believe, for buzzes twice, twice on the show. So I have some big buzzy shoes to fill. Shout out to Mark. Uh, we mm, sometimes Mark. review. <laughs> okay. yep, thank you. <laughs> it's not a negative thing at all. I just broke the rules. Sorry. We sometimes review movies. We mostly break off into tangents. Sometimes we accidentally make a good point. So if you're excited <laughs> about that, we always talk about sometimes they come 80s, back too. 90s. Yeah, sometimes yeah, sometimes we actually do a good job. Most times we don't. Uh, if you're into pulpy genre cinema from like the last 30 years, I think we're a hot spot for you. You should definitely come check us out. When I'm not podcasting, I am kind of moonlighting as a novelist. And I've actually uh, written quite a few Stranger Things books. It's a little show you may have heard of. Never heard this of is it. not okay. a joke. It's not a Sorry. bit. These aren't <laughs> fan fiction-y books. You buzz there yourself. You Somebody drink. <laughs> These aren't fan fiction books. He's drinking out of the fucking boot. Oh, I was going to reveal that later. Sorry, keep going, keep going. 
I used to, dude, represent the boot. Um, these are actual books that are like sanctioned by Netflix and the Duffer Brothers. So uh, the last one I wrote is Hawkins Horrors. It's a it's a horror anthology set in the world of Stranger Things. It's been out uh, since May, so definitely go check it out. That is fucking. Mm. Where can you get that? Awesome. Where you can, can get, get it, it anywhere. You can get it on Amazon, Walmart, Target. I'm gonna drop all the big box stores. Actually, go mm. to your independent bookstore and, yeah. and pick that up. Yeah, do that. I was gonna, yeah, support gonna some say, indies. Matt, support your indie people first. Come on, don't put Amazon right, first. Dude. Let's go. Oh shit. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can say that you you shouldn't because you want it's to a make little sales. store guys called Walmart. OK, <laughs> go check them out. Hey, keep using these <laughs> buzzwords. We'll we'll show up in twice as much stuff on Google. So fucking cool. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> Alibaba cash cash app. I'm just going to keep throwing them. Yeah. All right. For people that are listening that really want to hear about the menu, I promise stay with us really quick, though. We're going to get through our gripe section where we just get some shit off our chest. Matt has a gripe plan for us. I promise you we're getting to the episode. If you need to hear your menu stuff, you can go ahead and skip a couple seconds, but just we'll be there soon. I promise you. But the last thing I want to say, too, is that we did a secret Santa last year with podcasts, some of whom we had never heard of before, but I was happy to engage with. And unbeknownst to us, you got us in this yes. little podcast but you actually got us involved in this actually because the genre geeks reached out to us and said hey matt and mark said you guys are friends so be a part of us the refund team like let's go and i got my people like some books and stuff and you got us these gigantic two liter boots i have two <laughs> i have two beers pours into mine <laughs> and look at how much two, this is how big it's a two liter boot two beers is like halfway at best. Here, I'm going to do a screenshot and hope I don't fuck up my thing. Just watch out for the bubble. I just did it. Yes. And, and I already just bubbled. So anyway, thank you so much for being such a good friend, a good podcast friend. We love being your podcast friend. And for that, really quick, can you please, Matt, can you shout out our two sponsors for us? We would love for you to do that. Thank you so much. <laughs> Oh, shit. <laughs> Carlos Barozzo is our beer sponsor. Holy uh, crap. He hasn't sent beer in in apparently a very long time, but somehow still sponsors this show. We're confused about it, too. See Barozzo dot whatever his thing is. TV yeah. something. Beer. That's it. See Barozzo dot beer. And? And? And our second sponsor is alcoholism. I don't know what the second sponsor <laughs> your is. Favorite, second your favorite sponsor? sponsor. The music. Oh, my God. It's the artist in residence. Our buddy Dasein, we Guys. love Dasein. Dasein actually uh, shouts a lot on our uh, on our end of the he loves uh, your shout. pod too. So Guys. we love him. We love you, Dasein. Guys, yeah. I'm gushing right off the bat. I gotta do. We gotta set up the gush yeah. alarm. I, I this is better than John's ever done it. I it's thank you so much it's for that. slower than John's ever done it. We would except like that, to accept except this. that one time he had COVID. Except that one time he had COVID. That's exactly right. Uh. We love you, John. Shout Shit, out to John. I have to drink the beer slower today because of this. Um, Why? Because you're pre-gaming the show with like $3,000 whiskey? I did. I pre-gamed the show with a lot of expensive whiskey. It's great to have friends that are brand ambassadors for Scotch companies. Um, <laughs> the Macallan 25 was great. Um, and then I forget the Not other Not sponsored by them either. Okay. Get on Guys, that. we gotta get to, we gotta get to the menu. We've been listening to the people they want us to get to this the episode, and then we can open up for there. Spoiler free for a couple minutes. Recommendations at the end. Why don't we start with Dave for our gripes of the week? One minute. I don't have one. Get the fuck out of no, here. No, I had a good week. Dave, we started the segment because you, people wow. think we started because of me, but it was you like three weeks in a, a row complaining about AMC. And oh, I was like, can we just. Shit, like, oh, yeah. this, this started with you. It absolutely started with you. That one time you went on for 10 fucking minutes. Yeah, but that, also, yeah, Dave, and then, <laughs> then we said Peanut one minute. M&M gang represent. I love hearing Dave shout out to Peanut M&Ms. So yeah. good on you, brother. Uh, Dave, well, They're I running you... short lately. Like, like I've, got, I've got the last packet like two weeks in a row. Oh, it's goddamn supply chain. Right. Everybody, nobody's got anything what, are anymore. Are out of fucking peanuts? Yeah, well, come on, guys. Um, yeah. All right, well, Dave, you, you, can, you can run the show for this segment, but I guess that means that Matt's gripe is going to come up next. I have got a gripe. When I was invited on this show, I was promised a gripe slot. Here I go. You have 60 you seconds. Ready? Okay, guess what? You know what we need to do again? Curate our fucking trailers. I'm tired of getting a grab bag of trailers. If I'm going to see a non-horror movie, I shouldn't have horror trailers. If I'm going to see an action movie, yes. I shouldn't have a fucking romantic comedy trailer. Uh -huh. We used to be able to curate the trailers, right? Alamo Drafthouse kind of still technically does this, but our other chains, our Cinemarks, our AMCs, our Regals, they're not doing that anymore. I don't know if it was the advent of adding a bunch of Ford ads or Airbnb <laughs> ads into the pre-show. Or Coca-Cola, but like now all of a sudden we've got a grab bag of the same shitty trailers. At least mix it up. Give me something. I like when I saw the menu, I got a trailer for like Megan, the sec the killer sex doll movie. 
uh, The Chosen, the Jesus movie, and like Ant-Man Quantum Mania. Like these things don't go together. Curate my experience a little more. That's all I'm saying. Let's put an effort in. There's my gripe. Wow. Curate. On the money. On the money. <laughs> Thank you. You, we'll still make you drink, but no buzz for you yeah. because you got it in just in time. That was perfect. Yes. Wait, so really quick, what you're saying is if you see an action movie, you think they should give you action trailers. Yes, or like action adjacent trailers, you know, <laughs> maybe an action drama, a yeah. thriller, right? But don't don't give me the Jesus one and the killer sex doll one. Like curate those experiences for us. You know? what, do you, what do you think about getting trailers for movies that are coming out in 13 months like Oppenheimer did and Mission Impossible? Hate yeah, <laughs> hate that. Hate that so much. I could not give a fuck about Oppenheimer right now. I know. I'm, yeah, go, it's I'm going, going to Barbie get open the same day. It's going to be like Tenet. And I'm going to Barbie. <laughs> wow. Get the fuck out. I'm telling you, I'm going to Barbie straight up. I'm, I mean, go to Barbie. We love the creative team. Greta Gerwig, we, we praise you. She was... A very prominent member of our first ever episode where we talked about Little Women, but, um, but yeah, I hope something competes where they're like, you know what, we saved ourselves the ten million dollars on a year out in advance, and we did better. Okay, Dave, I'm ready. Go. I have two. I have two Netflix gripes, but I'm just gonna do one. Netflix, it's time that we grow the fuck up, and this is what I mean by this. All of the other inner, all the other apps that are social, that are are digital apps. I know Twitter is going through Firestorm, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. They all cater things to us, and that's great. But I go on Netflix, and I feel like a fucking idiot. Their user interface is so ridiculous. You know, the whole idea of like there's so there's so many channels, but nothing to watch. I've decided that that's actually what Netflix's brand is. There were 85 narrative movies that came out this year, and that is not series or documentaries, which puts the number between 150 and 200. So I go on, I've never heard of any of these things. They're all trending, which doesn't make any fucking sense. How is something trending that none of us have ever heard of? And I just want 2022 movies that are coming out, the award season movies, and I can't fucking find them anywhere. Also, I've been to Airbnbs that have Netflix logged in, and their trending now is different than mine. So I know that it's bullshit, and it's time that you grow the fuck up, just give us an experience that is easy to navigate that is cultivated to us i use john's netflix account show me some weird s&m mm. shit or get the fuck out don't try to tell me to watch this other thing i mean just the fact that you're using his account you should you should search for some s&m shit and just leave yeah. it there i can't we saw 365 days which is basically oh God, yeah. porn two years ago uh -huh. and there were two sequels and they didn't recommend them to john so clearly netflix sucks I, clearly they suck there were i, I, I go two on the other day i had shit? never heard of two they both came out this year i had never heard of any of these things where i'm on i go on and i say i've never heard of this and i leave i just get the fuck out of there because i don't know how to use it i like this plan where you use john's netflix and you watch like 365 days maybe coco melon that fucking weird baby show <laughs> just gets just start watching some weird things and then it says continue watching i want his whole continue, continue watching, watching yep. to be all yes <laughs> 365, all three, 365 days, days. mm-hmm Company anyway, the use, I know you you talked about UI with with Prime there, Matt, but it's like give me the 2020 movie 2022 movies. Also the genre if you want movie genres, you have to be you have to be clever. You have to know where to go cuz they don't want you to they want you to stumble into shit, but it's always yes. their shit. I just ugh, they don't know me at I'm all. I'm also tired of the recently added and the trending being the exact same fucking thing. There shouldn't it's be impossible. two sections if it's they're the same possible. movies. I, get, yeah. I believe the numbers. So when it says this is trending number one, I believe that. But when it says sure. trending now, a movie that came out at midnight that they did no marketing on, it's bullshit. Yeah, and they need, they need, they, they need to grow the fuck yeah. up. Sorry, I'm yeah. over a minute. You're well over a minute. See, this is why we put the timer in. Anything else, Dave, that we didn't, anything else, Dave, that we didn't cover before no, we get to God's, our menu episode? For God's sake, we're, we're 14 minutes in. Let's get to the movie. Okay, I promise, friends. That one guy I that commented on YouTube is going to be pissed, man. <laughs> <laughs> I promise, friends. This episode's for you, guy. <laughs> I promise, friends, I will give the pitch to this movie and then pass on the microphones to my friends who hmm. have their own microphones. I don't, I don't know whether you saw that, Matt. It was such a passive-aggressive comment, too. It was like... No, no, nothing directed towards us. It was helping everyone else. Has like the actual review starts at ten minutes and fifty three seconds. Yes, and we I, say that at the beginning. I was you like, know, you know, fair. What you got us? You got us. We talk a lot. I watch Love of Cinema on YouTube, and I also <laughs> comb the comments, and I've seen some real choice people popping up. Dude, that guy that wrote the essay was amazing. Oh yeah, yeah. You guys, you guys got some weirdos. But good on you. <laughs> yeah, good on you. It's all good, man. All right, people, the menu just came out into the wide release here this past week. 
November 18th is when this came out. We're recording this just after that. This is, uh, if you've seen the trailer, I, I'm, I'm kind of, uh, trailers have to do this. They have to tell you. I, I kind of wish you knew nothing, but you know, you, you gotta, they have to introduce the conflict. So I feel like people were going to go into the spoiler section pretty quick with this episode, even though it's just a movie about a restaurant where some shit happens that's in the trailer. I feel like we're just going to have to do our initial takeaways did we like the movie? Why quickly? And then move into spoilers pretty quick. But anyway, it's Anya Taylor joy who may very well be the number one slash somewhere in the top 10 movie stars in the world right now. Ray Fiennes, yeah. who I need to update my list of best character actors on the planet. Wait, I always have Ray or Ralph? Rafe. Ah, is that how you pronounce it's Rafe, it? Rafe, right? Cool. He does the silent L. He does the Rafe. Cool. Rafe, Rafe Fiennes. I did not know that. It was Ralph Fiennes in my from in my head for like oh my ten God. years. Yes. <laughs> Ray Fiennes, um, I need to tell Joy Nicholas Holt, mm. and then a whole bunch of people who are super famous that have done a lot of shit. The director of this movie is Mark Mylod, who you might not know, but I certainly knew because he directed a bunch of Game of Thrones episodes. He also has been producing Succession since the beginning. Um, he actually directed the second episode of Succession, which means oh. Not quite the first episode, but we trust you so much. He did win some Emmys because he produces it and has won Best Drama. Um, but bold that this TV director has <laughs> taken on this very specific genre film. Mm. So kudos to Mark. Dude, My do you, it was do you have an idea by... how much how much time passes between the pilot episode and the second episode of a series? Sometimes it's, yeah. a, year. Sometimes it's a year. But then you have to pass it on to somebody you trust. Is yeah. what I'm saying because that's an Adam McKay show who produced this movie with Will Ferrell. Yeah, yes. I saw really that. Really quick, when we go to the spoiler, I want to talk more about the cast and crew, and I want to talk more about Adam McKay when we get to the spoiler section, but I want to get into the movie here in a second. So it was written by two guys who have comedy backgrounds. One wrote for Seth Meyers, one wrote for John Oliver. Um, and again, this, the supporting cast is incredible. I know one of them from college, which is exciting. We'll talk about that later, too. Uh, John Leguizamo's in there, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But let's, let's get into the menu, people. So this is, here's the IMDb pitch, and then I'm going to pass it to you for your initial takeaways. A young couple, that's Anya Taylor-Joy and Nicholas Holt's characters, travels to a remote island to eat at an exclusive restaurant where the chef... Ray Fiennes, has prepared a lavish menu, think chef's table, with some shocking surprises. So we always start with our initial takeaways. What did you think? What did you feel watching this movie? And do you recommend others to see it? Why don't I start with Dave, my co-host? Because I feel like I, I haven't given you enough microphone time yet. And then we'll move to our friend here, Matt. Dave, what'd you think of the movie? <laughs> sure. Um, I, I saw the trailer like everyone else. I was like, is this is this what it is, or is this, is there some sort of twist? Are they is this whole trailer a misdirect? It's it's not as much of a misdirect as you'd think, but there's definitely a little bit of stuff that doesn't go the way the trailer leads you. Um, I came in and sat down, and I enjoy. I found the the beginning a little scattered. I want to say it, it kind of was just a little disorienting. Um, I think they did that on purpose, and then it settles down into the dinner. And the way they styled that and from that moment on and to the point where it turns south, uh, I had a great time. Everyone in my theater had a great time. People were laughing at the jokes that were just were not jokes. Um, I would, and I mean that in a, as a compliment because they were like, it was literally just written as a throwaway line. But some of them were fucking hilarious given the situation they're in. Um, I loved like the messages behind it, like eat the rich and all that sort of stuff. This says eat the rich written all over it. Um I just had a great time with this. I, I would, it. yeah, I would say go see this. It's fun. See it, see it with a group of people that you can talk about it afterwards because there's some I stuff agree. hidden in there. All right, Matt. Dude, I am right there with Dave. I had a raucously good time with this movie, and I think it's for two reasons. One, it is so much more than that trailer would suggest to you because I think they could have easily taken the easy way out and been like, hey, it's a cannibal thing. It's so much more than that, and it's so much more wicked than that. Um, mm -hmm. it, it's, it straddles this fine line between being a satire, being a black comedy, and almost verging on being a horror movie. Um, yeah. There, another movie that it sort of reminds me of but goes a little gorier is Ready or Not, where it straddles mm. that line and it's playing with your expectations. I had a blast with this movie. It's hilarious. The cast is fantastic. And like Dave said... See this with a crowd because it plays like gangbusters. Like the jokes work. All the jokes work. There are some great 
there's some great dialogue, but there are some satisfying visual gags in this yep. that I definitely want to touch on in spoilers. This is awesome. The second thing I want to say is great movie, super entertaining. I have some grapes, but they're not that many. I will just say, I am so fucking glad this movie was not directed by M. Night Shyamalan because <laughs> that guy would have fucked this up so bad mm. and made it. <laughs> so I was waiting for that shit. <laughs> He would have made it so obvious and cloying and weird. And the and, and then there would have been here, that one throwaway scene where some random guy just explains the entire stuff yep. that's happened. Or they like would have been like, remember like, that like weird you were part an idiot the kid for not knowing. Yeah. asked all these weird questions? That totally pays off now. Like, yeah. There would have been something dumb, but this movie is far too intelligent. The writers that you brought up, um, they actually used to write for The Onion. Uh, these guys are super sharp, Love the onion. funny guys. So definitely see this. Go in, have fun, especially if you're into foodie culture or you like food. Oh, network, my God. You're going to fucking love this movie. <laughs> you might be slightly offended, but you're going to love it. <laughs> you should definitely be offended. But I think <laughs> it's fun. Those people need the piss taken out mm -hmm. of them a little bit. You know what I mean? Foodie culture, I think they're kind of like the art world in that they're very easy to lampoon, but they kind of deserve it. Yeah, you know it's, I mean? it's, it's kind of like they know it's kind of like foodie culture. If the foodies were Star Wars fans when Ryan Johnson makes a Star Wars film. You know what? <laughs> Fuck Ryan Johnson, and I'll take that buzz too. Yeah, but the, apparently the Knives Out movie's great, and that's right up his alley. And we all know that that's going to be fucking good. So you can fuck Ryan Johnson all you want, but you know that Knives Out, out movie's going to be pretty. I fun love to Knives Out. I hated Last Jedi. Yeah, of course. I've come around I'll a little go, bit. I'll go to bed. <laughs> Uh, so those two writers are Seth Rice, who wrote for Seth Meyers, and then Will Tracy, who wrote, he's, he's a producer on Succession as well, and he wrote for John Oliver. So one person said, hey, I got hired by Seth Meyers. The other person said, hey, I got hired by John Oliver and Succession, and one person won five Emmys. Uh, which decision <laughs> do you think worked out for them? Um, so... I, I completely agree. I had such a good fucking time in this movie. And actually, all I want all I want to say beyond that before we get into the spoilers, because I thought this was great, is I was ready to ask Matt. I said, Matt, I, I use two words way too much on this episode. One is satire. <laughs> and the other one I can't remember because I drink on this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I hope it's my lord. Mark my lord. <laughs> also, shout out to Judith Light. Angela for Angela Mona. Angela's back, baby, from mm -hmm. Who's the Boss? Oh, that's great. where I recognized her from. I Who's actually found um, Hung Ch Chow, Hung Chow, um, steals Is every she scene from she's downsizing? in. Downsizing? That's the lady from Downsizing, right? I think so. I don't know. I didn't look that one up, but she's from Watchmen every, and every, Downsizing. Yes, those yeah, are, yeah. Every, she steals this steals movie every scene yes. she's in. Yeah, she's yes. so fucking funny. Big ups um, to that lady. So, and then wait, I forget what the other one. I forget the other thing I was gonna say. But I was gonna. Oh, oh, the other thing I was gonna ask you, Mark, Matt. <sighs> Buzz, buzz, please yep, buzz. He's, he's done. <laughs> I just did it myself. Um, they look Matt's alike. They look so alike. Mark, uh, <laughs> I just need the leg. Was skinny face. I was going to ask okay. you, is this a black comedy or is this a satire? But you know what? Let's save that conversation for spoilers because you, the fact That's that you, you said that, it's, it's, un, and then the horror element. I was literally like, I literally was going to ask you this because I was like, I'm tired of saying right, things are satire. Is it a or, horror movie or is it not? Or it is it all three? Uh, what, what's line. the right? So yeah. we'll talk about that I, in a second. I would lean more towards psychological thriller. Yeah. I lean, yeah. I lean towards black comedy. So let's have a fun little debate when we right. leave, when we leave here. Okay. Love it. Cause, cause the endings matter when it comes to solidifying a genre. And we obviously can't do that before the spoiler. So, um, I was going to say something else, but the menu, Fuck it, people. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and talk a little bit more about the cast and the crew, and we'll gush about that, and then we're going into spoilers. So this is our long segue to say, Dad, if you're mowing the lawn and you haven't seen this movie, you have five minutes to turn the lawnmower off. Okay. So the, the supporting cast, you also mentioned- you missed a spot. And you missed a spot on the lawn. <laughs> That's right. Got to watch out, Dad. Are we still um, mowing the lawn? It's fall. Maybe he's doing something with leaves. But here's the thing. The leaves, depending on how often you rake and mow- Oh, my God. This is how it happens. <laughs> You can mow yeah. your leaves <laughs> as long as it's not too many leaves. Okay. Anyway, um, the supporting cast, you mentioned. So all, every single person here is, a, I think I recognize that person, except for my friend who the younger people would recognize probably, but uh, there's niche audiences. Janet McTeer, two-time Academy Award, Academy Award nominee is in here as Lily in the food critic. You have Hong Chao as, as uh, Elsa, as you had mentioned. You have um, Paul 
Adelson, Paul Adelson, who I remember from um, the Land of the Lost movie with Will Ferrell, Denny McBride, and Bedazzled, <laughs> and just like one of those weird, and he's not even in the 12, because the idea of this is that 12 people are chosen to go to this chef's table-like experience at Rafe Fine's kitchen on an island, and he's not even on there. Um, John Leguizamo is, he plays a, a movie star. I'm here for the Leguizamo aunts. We are here Whatever for Whatever you the, want to call absolutely. it. He's in Violent Night too. Yeah. I'm, I'm yeah. here for it. I'm glad to see him back. Did, you, did you see the interview he did where he's apparently based this character on uh, Steven Seagal? Yes, which is genius. I thought for genius. sure, I was like, who's he lampooning? And yeah. that it's Seagal is genius because I heard in the original script for this, he was supposed to be, they literally wrote it as Daniel Radcliffe. Oh, it was wow. supposed to be Daniel Radcliffe playing a version of himself, which is crazy that he didn't do it because that guy takes a didn't. lot of ballsy chances. Kind of glad that they didn't. But that's, I'm glad that's it's just like a random four. character. Yeah. Yeah. Me too. But, but I love the Seagal take. That's yeah. Great. Well, apparently they have beef left over from executive decision. He nice. really amazing. Yeah. That's great. That is just great. Amy Carrera plays John Leguizamo's assistant character in this show. She's actually, if, if anybody with kids knows Elena of Avalor, Princess Elena, we don't have kids, it's an animated series, but she's the voice of that. She was also in Dylan and the last That's on Witch John's Hunter. currently watching on and his five, Netflix, I think. <laughs> he's got nieces. Um, Reed Burney's a Tony Award winning actor who's been in several movies and TV shows. Um, he was in The Hunt recently. He's been in House of Cards. He played Donald Blythe in House of Cards. Judith Hunt Light is a good movie. Everybody my, see The Hunt. I went to a, a talk back with um, Where can we Judith find that Light now? I've been looking for that for a while. Like, I don't know. Uh-huh. Fucking I have Google it on it. Google Play as like a VOD. I uh, okay. bought it and so right. I just own it. Um, Arturo Castro, who plays... Um, um, uh, what the fuck's his name? He, he's one of the, the finance bros. He plays Soren, one of the finance bros. Uh, the, the one who darts out, the first one to yeah. dart out when they're like, so any of the it's guys want to go? <laughs> he was on Broad City for many years as well as... Um, I love the, how the finance Lane. bros don't have names. Pretty much they're just I mean, yeah. the finance bros. <laughs> yeah. that, is yeah. such, bros. that is such a... like They've obviously worked with yeah. like corporate banking before. Because well, those Rob guys Yang, are fucking interchangeable. You can Rob just Yang pull three was on people six, off the floor. Rob, so a friend of mine was up for this role, but Rob Yang was on Succession as the guy that Kendall was pitching behind his father's back for investment because of his father's money and like season one of Succession, season two of Succession. And then a couple other people that you'd recognize, but my buddy Mark St. Cyr from Elon University, shout out. What a guy. He's fucking been working his ass off. He's on um, High School Musical, the musical, the series, as well as he was in Marshall uh blow the belt and he's in this doomsday series that i don't think made it to a, ne- a major network but kudos to mark i hope your career takes off and matt you sort of know him because you did what did you do for high school musical the musical so i actually did so i worked on the ad campaign for high school musical the 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 series the musical the series um and we had to write a bunch of tags and just different stuff for the cast and i remember him um i don't know if he actually said anything that i ever wrote but i wrote for <laughs> some stuff for your show guys That's cool. so good job Happy to see you make it. Good on you, buddy. Fuck yeah. Last thing is this is produced by Will Ferrell and Adam McKay. So now there's a succession connection that you got. Mark Mylott, again, the director, comes from succession. One of the writers comes from succession. Adam McKay produces succession, of course. But I thought him and Will Ferrell still had beef from the whole um, winning time thing. So this is still, I I don't want to spread rumors or anything, but Will Ferrell's been a lifelong Lakers fan. His entire life, he loves the Lakers. The Winning Time, the Showtime Lakers series comes out, and they originally cast Michael Shannon to play Jerry Buss, f- the famous Jerry Buss, who bought the Lakers in 1979. And he pulled out, and apparently Adam McKay cast John C. Riley, who was Will Ferrell's sidekick in a lot of their comedies about 10, 15 years ago, yep. sort of without telling Will Ferrell. And so I thought there was beef, because Will Ferrell loves the Lakers, and he wanted to be Jerry Buss. I thought there was beef there, but here they are producing this movie together. So I don't, maybe they got over it. Like it's you know it's Very surprising. Curious. Surprising what you can get over when you're throwing around millions of dollars. Good point. <laughs> That's true. Or maybe Will Ferrell just stayed home and uh, yeah, he just threw some money. As like yeah, a, as like <laughs> maybe a, hmm, maybe they friends. maybe they bought the script ten years ago. I have no fucking idea. But yeah. let us dive into the movie. We are officially in spoiler section full time. I wanted to introduce the actors really quick, just to say. I love act. I love actors. I do. I, I still believe deep down inside when it comes to the cinema, good story, good writing, of course, good directing matters. But people really want to see actors act. They want to. They want to believe these characters. They want to relate to them. They want to picture themselves in the room. And I, the, the biggest. I'm going to say this quickly, and then I'll pass it off. The best thing about this movie, apart from how well directed and well shot and everything that this is, they're all in the same room. 
you know that they're not cutting around it. There's not coverage. There's not, Oh, they filmed this last week. They are all there and they're all visible. They're all going through this together. So therefore the audience experience, you can't help, but feel like you are in there. So when shit starts to happen, the audience is actually a part of it as if the, we're the 13th member of this restaurant. And I think they did that really well. And I they think really all of these actors, including not just the 12, but the whole chefs, the, the, the sous chefs, the, the hostesses, including, um, the, the, you shouted out um, Hong Chow as Elsa, who's sort of like the she's the hostess that you could call. She's like the she's like the true believer of the, of this group. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Call her that. And yeah. so I, I just I don't want to say a specific word because we're not in spoilers. No, yet. no, no we're totally in spoilers. spoilers. We're in spoilers. Oh, so we had spoilers. Saying she's like the true believer in the cult, basically yes. the the cult of of this chef. And did you like the cults? Was that a happy twist? Because you knew some shit was going to go on. Did you like the fact that this I, was going to turn into I a cult? Love I have to say first, I have to fucking and fucking turn that fucking gush on because I'm about to gush on Ray Fines. Ray Fines fucking rules. Yeah. I have always yeah. thought that Ray Fine rules, but he rules especially hard in this movie because he's playing a part. And I was commenting. I saw this movie with my wife. And afterwards, we were both kind of like, you know, talking about how great Ray Fines it. And I kept thinking, this is like a role. If this movie were made 30 years ago. Anthony Hopkins would have played that part. Sure. He would have been, he's, he's very Hannibal Lecter. He literally has um, uh, season one of Westworld. (laughs) Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Same deal. Yeah. But here he is just so in control, but the, the, the Lecterness comes in the mania and you, and the glee that you get from watching a really expert psychopath carry out a, fucking amazing plan so i loved him and anya taylor joy is great but i think hong chow steals this movie ray finds rules and i want to give a shout out to nick holt who plays the most lovable douchebag <laughs> in the world <laughs> yeah until his he's fanboy not. bullshit <laughs> was so funny yes yeah. it was great even there's a great sight gag where when the men are kicked out for that bit um as the revenge He's pe- trying to peek in on the women through yes. the, the glass so that he can oh, see yeah. what they're what are we missing out on. It's such a great sight gag, and it pays that character off. Well, so so fir- it's the well. first thing he yells when he runs in. What did you get? What did you get? He's right. just obsessed. He's jealous that she's talking to chef. It was just that character. That guy fucking brought it. So I think. Good I, on I, Nick I, Holt. I think I don't know this. If if uh, Nick Holt, um, Ray Fiennes, and like Anya Taylor Joy, I think if they didn't have the chemistry they had. Because first it was like Holt and Taylor Joy's chemistry. Then she shifted over to Fines and bouncing off that, and he became the outer. So it was like she shifted from one camp to the other. And I think if that chemistry didn't work so well, this might not have worked so well. But sure. it did. Like, I don't yeah. know. Like, did they just live in the same really island for works. a week before they shot or something? It was this, really good. When you're filming, they were all in those bunks together. Yeah, right. No, that was the actual no, dorm. I don't. I don't know if they had stand-ins or anything, but like they were, they, they were all there. I, I just think that kind of things. I don't think matters. they. I don't think they would yeah. on something like I this. I actually want to go back and rewatch it now because there's a great gag since we're in spoilers. Yeah. Where Anya Taylor Joy, you know, she's gotten out to a radio to summon the help from the Coast Guard, and here comes the Coast Guard, and you're like, yes, these people are saved, and. It turns out he's a secret kitchen staffer in disguise and his gun is an elaborate lighter that he lights the candle with on a table. And I want to go back now to see if that guy was in the fucking background because I'm sure he was. I'm sure he was back there working. Wasn't he driving the boat that dropped them off? I I thought it was an old guy, but I might be getting him Hmm. confused with the guy who was picking up the scallops. Yeah, I think there was an old guy working it on. I thought he was on the boat crew. But I wanted to go back because there's a perfect moment in the beginning where Nick Holt is like, you know, the guy's like, he's remarking that he knows his name. And he's like, that's so cool that he knows my name. And Anya Taylor-Joy is like, didn't you ask him his name? And I was like, <laughs> I know in that scene, that fucking Coast Guard guy is back there, like fucking peeling a carrot or something. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm sure he's back there. He's got to be back there. Yeah. Do you, do you think when they checked everybody in right away, just like the little details, because it's all, you have to you have to meet 12, at least 12 new people. So as soon as it's like, only 12 people are, they said that very quickly in the movie. And it was like, okay, well, we're going to have to get to know all 12 of these people. I actually thought that that one scene where they checked everybody in, and a lot of this does come down to Hong Chow. You got you. You got you, you were off and running. I got it. I, I didn't need much more than yeah. that. And they were oh, yeah. able to establish the trope or the, or the archetype of each character, not just their like the food critic, for instance. Now, is the food critic the cynic, like whatever, you, whatever the archetype is on top of that? You kind of got that very quickly. And then they slowly started to open it up. But it wasn't cheeky when they introduced the tropes, like even the finance bros. It was simple. It was it was yeah. it was a light touch. It even was, the, it was delicate. the older, the older couple. Um, 
like they're not on the tour they're already in the restaurant when they get there and you're like well why weren't they on the tour and then it comes out that they've been there fucking 12 times yeah they were that sitting at the great. table when they came in yeah. again read bernie and that, that and payoff of life. you've eaten here so many times can you name one dish you yeah. had the last time I, I would, it was i would i would yeah. i, I, I straight halibut. away drew a parallel to theater goers in new york because like i've done some i've done some like off 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 broadway stuff in new york you and sometimes some crowd, you did some, some good shit sometimes yeah. it gets weird and the, like some of these shows are weird but they fill up and i think the reason they, they fill up is because people want to be seen going to them yeah. so they can go i was there uh, they're not appreciating the art they don't get the art they don't understand it but they were there i've been there and right. I, I think that was a little dig at those kind of people yeah the scenesters the fucking broadway scenesters not even broadway yeah. like the I, I did a show at La Mama that like it was packed out every night and it was some of the, that's the, probably the second weirdest thing I've ever done in theater. That show. Was that the one where you had a different guest every night? No. And you had to go early. No, okay. no. <laughs> <laughs> but that was also at La Mama. Okay. So it's, that's a very respectable avant-garde. It is. Off, and it definitely knows how to draw a crowd, but I, it, I, I did of, often wonder watching them. Like, are they here to see because they want to see the show or do, are they not getting this? They they're just there to be seen. Here. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, speaking of avant-garde, uh, Anya Taylor-Joy has my line, my favorite line in this movie, when she's confronting Chef and she's kind of, they're playing the little tete-a-tete together. And she's like, just make me a cheeseburger. No avant bullshit. Just yeah. make me a cheeseburger <laughs> that I will enjoy. Because that's me. That's why I think it's like, I'm not a foodie person. These yeah. fucking meals would be wasted on me. Um, I have a, I have, a, I'm surrounded by foodies. That's the irony of my life. My wife is a big foodie. My in-laws are big foodies. They love fancy food. I like Taco Bell. Okay. I, and I, will ta- I just tell talked you about Taco, I like Taco Bell recently. I love Taco Bell. So, Taco Bell is awesome. Thank you. Why am I getting buzzed for liking Taco Bell? Killing Taco yourself. Bell is delicious. Buzz. Wait, what, Nacho what, what fries, guys. They're bad. World are we live? We're living in Elon but Twitter saying, now. I felt so much. I felt it when she was like, no avant bullshit. Just make me a fucking cheeseburger that's good. And also, I was like, she, she tried some avant shit. I mean, I, I feel like if I went to a fancy like, restaurant and I was still hungry, I would just eat a cheeseburger really quick afterwards. Well, I mean, there, there, was defi- there was definitely a reason <laughs> yeah. behind the You'd cheeseburger. You'd be planning request. your trip to Shake Shack right before. That's but what I, you would be doing. She also cemented her place in history because that is the first time in history anyone's life has been saved by a cheeseburger. <laughs> yes. Wait a minute! Did we all did we all go get cheeseburgers? I did. I ate a cheeseburger afterwards. I fucking got a cheeseburger got a after. Cheeseburger. And all I, I had to decide was, do I want a quarter pounder or a half pounder? That's what I did. Yes. Fuck my cholesterol, I'm, dude. Yeah, you went to, you went to McDonald's? No, I went to a bar. I went to an Irish bar. I, oh, I good. I was going to say, oh, Jesus Christ, you. that good motherfucker's killed more people than Pennywise. <laughs> um. Guys. What a cheeseburger! As in terms of cinematic cheeseburgers, like yes, we're talking about mm. it being a fun black comedy and great thrillers. But if you're into food and food photography, there's some beautiful shit in this movie, and they do the that food on purpose. Is presented so artfully, but I got to tell you, the cheeseburger shot stands up to the fucking foam mm-hmm. and the leaf shit. That is the most delicious looking cinema cheeseburger I've ever seen. Ever yeah. seen in a movie? I, I mean, this was definitely people who who love like food preparation shows and stuff. So. It's so those scenes were definitely shot in the style. I love the menu cards and the, how they got more and more those ridiculous as the night oh got more God. fucking sinister. The last, yes. the last couple of them were oh just. Oh my God. The last, dude, my favorite one was Tyler's bullshit. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Undercooked lamb, uninspired, like fucking garnish. It was so good. That yeah. scene is also fucking awesome. And, yeah. and I think the we tension goes to the roof. Genres, is like, is that is a scene that juggles black comedy but also set like it satirizes those cooking, those cooking competitions, mm-hmm. but it's also horrific because this guy is being dressed down and humiliated. Yeah. It's, it's degradation of the highest order. Right. And then he um, literally whispers in his ear and he goes off to kill himself. It's like, what did he, what, what did he whisper in yeah, his ear? What exactly, do we think well, he whispered? I, no, I, I think it's more like uh, that's kind of like the cooking show in itself where a contestants eliminated. It's like they literally dress them down and humiliate them and then just send them on their way. Yes. And it's it's like I don't know whether you know, but reality TV uh, has the highest stat for post appearance suicide in the industry. Really? Yeah. In crew as Jesus well. Jesus Christ! I don't know if that stat's still current, but it certainly was. Probably about not about, the Great British Bake Off though. Those people are too sweet. They're damn Everybody sweet. Loves each other on those shows. No one's killing themselves at the Great British Bake Off. Unless you count the diabetes. 
they don't really pay these people very much. So if you lose, you you don't leave with very much, despite like yeah. missing your high school prom or whatever. Even you leave with the memories. That's even what you leave like, with. Even like American Idol and like the pop yeah. star competitions and stuff like that, they they jack them into contracts where they the studio they have to pay for their studio stuff out of the profits. They don't get all that studio stuff for free. Yeah. So like it's no it's nowhere near and as good as run to Broadway. The people run, start begging yeah. to do like regional theater after that because it's like they want to keep their name. Their name goes away very quickly after that because there's a new season the next year of four different competition shows. Hey I'm, man, they're making another 365 days. You could sign up, be famous right away. Right <laughs> away. I wanna <laughs> don't have to lose that 15 minutes. I want to play an arbitrary game that doesn't mean anything, but I think it'll help spark some conversation because this movie's so good and all we're going to do is say, that was great, that was great. So let, let's. Yeah. I want to turn this into a little bit of a conversation. It's, sure. very, it's a very simple conversation. Dark comedy versus satire. Again, yeah. it's, a, it's worthless, but what I think what I hope it'll do is it'll spark some conversation. So I would love to start with dark comedy because I use satire too much. So things for and against dark comedy. So for instance, against dark comedy would be the sous chef killing himself because that scene was fucking terrifying. It got me in the gut. It got me in the core, especially we talked about the Fablemans last week. People yeah. check our feed. We it's it's all about the creation of art and artists and and what you have to give up to be an artist. And there's just so many things that are brought up in that film. And this person ultimately says, I'm not willing to give everything. And so therefore he has to kill himself. And this is before well, I, we know I feel this like is before we really know the gag. <laughs> this is before we and, and and I've seen the bear, so I understand people being drawn like go, going to the brink, but actually ending themselves is 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 that's, fascinating. So that's, that's against the, black You need comedy. to you need to take that into yeah. account the fact that they were all ending themselves. Well, I didn't know that yet, though. Yeah. They didn't say that yet. But that was so a nice for, little fill-in there. For black comedy is just... Does the just theatricality of his suicide make it kind of comedic? I love it. You know, I, they spread the sheet out. They put the they, palm yeah. fronds around him. And they made it a meal. Everybody's they a meal. Sheet. And they go to the... This is the point where the art, the food critic still is saying it's part of the performance. Yeah. And so sorry. we are laughing at her believing her own bullshit. And then the right? guys in the That's, kitchen draw a sheet behind him outside the plane of focus as yes. well. Yes. And, that, it's so, and to me, yeah. that kind of made me giggle, though. Like, that made me right. laugh a bit. Okay, so that's it's in, fucking bleak. In black comedy. Yeah. And I, I think thing this, with, this walks both lines. Well, yeah. well, we'll get to satire in a second. So yeah. for black comedy, the endings matter. And I'm our co-host, John, who, Matt, you are filling in for. Thank you so much. We'll say the endings matter. And for me, a lot of times I'm like, I understand, though, you you say so everything you want to say, and then you just have to tidy up this little story. But you've already said what you want to say. So I don't care as much about endings as most people do, unless... They either really work or don't. In this case, they didn't end with the fire. They ended with Andy Taylor Joy eating the burger and yeah. smiling. And she had no regret. She had no guilt. She, I, I thought for a second she might try to ride the the boat into it. She just sat there. She ate the cheeseburger and she smiled because it was delicious. And then she went back mm -hmm. home. And I don't even think the motor was on, but she was like, "I'm good." And for me, I was like, "Okay, this is definitely a comedy." Proceed with your with the conversation. What do you think? Black comedy for and against. Any any things about it? I mean, they, they, set, it's they set up yeah, they set up elements of black comedy. They're like the the oh fuck yeah. when she saw the old guy. It's like oh god, is this his like illegitimate daughter or something? That and then you find out that she's an escort, and that the just way, put in a whole. The way she explains it too is like it was. I'm glad it was so simple because it was yeah. like it was like yeah. it was simple and it, it was also kind of powerful because she was like I like what I do except at this moment where it's going to get me killed. She said she liked what she did right after she said this guy said, pretend to be my daughter while he masturbates. Yeah, but she said, well, and, and never she said break normally. Yeah, normally she likes what she does. But that one put her off. Um, and so, like, that set her up as, like, a, a darker... Like, it set her up for the dark, some of the dark humor that came out. That's I think that's why she was so... It was so easy for her to just let them go and yeah. walk away. Like, I, I turned this situation to my advantage and got out. Um, I love that last scene with the cheeseburger. It was just like, all right, he did what he had to do. I'm like, Here's my cheeseburger. Life goes on. The rich are gone. You think anybody asked why everybody else didn't just order a cheeseburger? Um, I don't think it would have worked for anyone else because <laughs> they wouldn't have appreciated right. it. And he would have seen through it, right? He, it would absolutely. Have been like they're and copying I, or they're following a trend. I they're doing what that, everybody else does. I, they knew that? They understood I, that? Well, no, I think they also... No, by that point, they, they'd got to the point where they were trapped and because they relied on other paying other people to do stuff for them constantly and relied on other people to live like live half their lives for them, they had no idea how to save themselves. 
They just go about their rich lives and experience these things. Other people organize it for them. Other people pick up their laundry. Other people do that stuff. They have no idea how to get themselves out of the shit they're in. So they died. Plus, though, that her cheeseburger bit, and I can't take credit for this. My my wife pointed this out to me, so shout out to my wife. Shout out to the bartender in the booth. Bartender in the booth. She told me, she was like, it works for her, and it wouldn't have worked for the other people because she gives him something. She's not just a taker. She gives him something. In that moment, she gives him the joy of cooking again. Yeah. She yeah. gives him that reminder. So she trades right before he kills that himself. joy. Yeah. <laughs> right. So then he's he gets something for his burger, and she can now leave. So they can't give him that again. There's hmm. no transaction happening. Yeah, she gave him the thing um, that the rich people had stripped from him. Yeah. Um, also, I want to say for dark comedy, another point for dark comedy is literally dressing your guests as giant s'mores. That's silly. It's <laughs> yeah. very yes. silly. It's meant to be funny. Um, not even in a satirical way. They're wearing giant chocolate caps and like vests made of marshmallows. Like, and that that's one, funny. That one shot where the chocolate's <laughs> melting down her face and everything. It's <laughs> great. Yeah, that you is guess? black comedy. That is Did absolutely, you get Midsummer yes. vibes? I got Midsummer vibes from some of this. I still haven't seen Midsummer. Yeah. Midsummer. Midsummer. It's on my list. It's on Prime and it's it's... I know I was gonna do it for the. I uh, should have seen that by now. I'm gonna say I'm gonna say this. It's not as good as Hereditary, but it's better than any oh, other movie in like that Hereditary. genre. And I will go the other direction and tell you I liked it better than Hereditary. Great, great. I'm buzzing myself. Then and, for but being here's the only thing it. that oh, sucks somebody about else tried to buzz me. I'm sorry. <laughs> set aside, set aside three hours of your life, Dave, because Midsommar uh-huh. is long. It's long. Oh yeah, yeah I'm gonna watch are, that extra cut. I've seen this one time, and I watched it by myself on my laptop. It doesn't matter why. And I still remember <laughs> there are things in this movie that like appear in my dreams. Like it is, I'll never forget the one guy just jumping off the cliff and not making it. You know oh, what I mean? Jesus. Yeah. A couple of the ending moments. There's a couple things where I'm just like, dude, I know we're in spoilers, but not for me. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's for me. You buzz me. Okay. That's for you, dude. You spoiled some Midsommar for Dave. <laughs> <laughs> Good. You might go- <laughs> right, I want to shout out another my point. <laughs> you got. You got. Another point for black comedy while Jeff chokes is <laughs> we'll when the men in a second. have run, and the one guy. This was another favorite. Oh my god! Of mine. Yeah. When the guy is on, hiding yeah. in the chicken coop, oh, there's guy. just an arm of a sous chef that reaches in to hand him a prize, which is last man gets a, a bonus bite, a supplemental bite. It's staged funny. It's meant to be funny. And, and what we, is the food? We don't eat? have to see the guy knowing. And we it, don't have to see the guy eat it to know he fucking devoured it. Yeah, it's, and it's again, a yeah, he egg. just accepted. And it's he an just egg. accepted it. They, they didn't know he was the, the last person was going to be the chicken coop. They didn't prepare the egg, but maybe they did. It's that is dark comedy. But it's, it's just best. nicely buttoned dark comedy, right? Yeah. Just that yes. little button on it is so nice. Yeah. yeah. Okay, I'm with you too. Because because I just want to be clear to our friends that are like, what is a black comedy exactly? It's those hardcore satirists honestly, out there that are like, yes. it's not a satire. I mean, if you if you want black comedy, go go for bro- gross point blank. If you want black gross comedy, go for Medea Diary of a Mad Black Woman. <laughs> okay, I was gonna I was gonna say happiness, but that's not and that, that happiness is torture. It's it's the Co- it's the Coen Brothers. Go watch Fargo. That's a black comedy. Oh my god, yeah, um, that is a black comedy because co- it ends well. Which Shakespearean comedy is really just anything that ends well. So technically, Fargo is a black comedy. Blood Simple is a black comedy. Honestly, every single one of their movies is a is a black yeah. comedy, except for No Country for Old Men, which is why they won an Oscar for it. Okay, so now. That we've covered that basis. That that's probably where it leads, even though it has horror elements. Let's talk about the satire because obviously that's layered in throughout. And I hope people who oh are God, still listening so at this point in the it. episode want to engage with this rather than us sit there and be like, "Fuck the rich!" Like now, yeah. let's. This is our moment to sit here and talk about those options and those elements. So Ray Fines kind of spells it out. So I'm not going to hammer it home of that we are a wasteful species, we're ruining our planet, all these things that we already kind of know that are in there. But I love the fact that it is chaptered. I love the fact that because we talked about cinema chapters it's, with Spielberg and Fableman, it's it's chorus, <laughs> yes. it's it's chorus, but the film is chaptered in such a way that it, you you divulge into it, mm-hmm. so that by the end of it, like Midsummer, you just accept your fate in a weird way. And to me, that is satire. This sort of it takes a while to understand, but the ultimate understanding is that we are useless and we are wasteful, and the planet would be better without us. That was the biggest satir- satirical thing I got, and we got it right away, but we didn't really understand it until. The the end and i think they did that brilliantly what do you guys think relating to satire how does this i think this- there are two hardcore like really like hitting nail on head satire moments the tech bros are ha- the finance bros are handed 
tortillas that have bank information lasered on them. They are literally yes. eating the rich. They are literally eating the information that makes them money. By the way, that's also my favorite Hong Chow moment is when she's like, these are tortillas. Like yes. her delivery <laughs> of that, they're like, what the fuck is this? Tortillas. tortillas deliciosas. Amazing delivery. Um, and the other thing is when Ray Fines reveals, hey, we're changing owners. The former owner who <laughs> basically ran this ownership. restaurant into the ground is outside. Everybody looks and he's got angel wings on. And in this elaborate kind of like Joker-esque setup, he's lowering this guy into the into the river so that he can drown. And I was just like, this is like, this feels satirical. Again, he's this guy was drowning in money. Now he's drowning for real, right? Um, it felt almost like levels of like David Fincher 7 of like, this is fucking symbolism. Right? Yeah. I was like... Jesus, that's satire. Well, that's satire. it was also his, like his transition from you know God to the devil, as yes. well. The fallen 100%. angel thing, because yes. they even reference fallen yeah, angels. As soon as you die, you're useless. It's funny that everybody's so important. Well, no, he saw him as die. the devil now because he sold him out. Well, that too. Yes. Um, there's there's so much in this. There's like it it satirizes foodies to the extreme. Sure, um, sure it, it satirizes definitely. review critics to the extreme. All critics, any All critic. critics, yeah. Um, yeah. It satirizes classism. It, the disassociation of the rich. It it touches it all. Like there's so much in there that also, they just just they kind of just I, point out. Sorry, Dave. I've said this since American Idol. Maybe just I'm a voice teacher now, who's a former performer. Um, Simon Cowell ruined us. I think I think oh, Twitter, yeah. Instagram, all of these things goes back to Simon Cowell, where you're like, oh my god, I was thinking that too, and all of a sudden it was cool to be the villain because he was the most popular person on television and. The, we only liked him for the negative things. The positive things he said was, I thought you're great. Like he would never, nobody would ever be like, Simon said this. They were like, Simon liked them. But like they would quote the shit that he said. Yes. When it comes to food. So Nicholas Holt is, is the great example in this. And this is all over Twitter. It's really funny that this came out while Twitter is literally in a dumpster fire. But it's like. <laughs> we, I mean, we currently have more employees than Twitter, I think. <laughs> 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 Aww. And our sponsors don't pay us. Um, I <laughs> they just gave us free beer once two eight years ago. Um, I <laughs> I buzzed. Yeah. I meant to buzz I, I myself. Buzz. <laughs> Sorry, you mentioned Jeff, him at the beginning. Jeff, yeah, Jeff. Zebra Jeff wants. <laughs> Jeff wants. He has a couple. Has trouble uh, discerning the button colors. Everybody's a critic. Everybody's an expert until they have to do yes. it themselves, and then they suck. I think that, and which is funny because the best thing about this is that none of this is new which is what i think is ray finds i need to put him in my pantheon or i don't want to say mount rush anymore but like for me it was philip seymour hoffman gene hackman those were the character actors regardless of gender where it was like you can't touch them philip seymour hoffman and gene hackman the irony of them winning their first oscars their only oscar for philip seymour hoffman but their first Oscars for leading performances is it's hilarious because they are the best supporting actors of all time. They don't seem like characters until you realize how much of a character they are. Ray Fiennes has to be on that list. He knew his assignment so fucking well, and he saw through everybody. Like, how, how do you do that with a look? Mm. I know he had good dialogue, yeah. but how do you do that with a look? With a clap. Where you sit there. With just a clap where he could command so much out of that, right? And then, and then that clap comes back then, but, at the end. <sighs> I love that. A literal yeah. clap back. Yeah. yeah. It was great. And, and, then, wanna, um, and we, the guy, yeah, the so, guy next so to me, yeah. the guy next to me in the, in, like about two seats down was like, when she stopped and did it, he was like, oh, snap. <laughs> it's like out loud. I was like, <laughs> yeah, that's exactly oh, what yeah, you meant funny. to think. That's yeah. when I miss New York audiences. <laughs> they got to talk at the screen. Well, yeah. Uh, I, I, I he, was also, also, he was also telling her to run, bitch, run when she was in the apartment. So in, in, in his house. So, yeah. I also want to say advice. that I'm, um, I, I'm not like a big food movie guy. It's a very weird, smaller subgenre, right? You've got movies like Big Night um, that are just, you know, strictly about restaurant culture. You know, recently, right, you called out The Bear, which is an incredible Bear. show. But there's one movie that it, this kind of reminded me of in a weird reverse way. And that was Ratatouille, which is a movie I adore. Mm. And Ratatouille oh, is yeah. a movie that's so, all about Ray finds his weird so e his say. ego and he's the head chef at yeah, the same in, time. In right? Ratatouille, the goal is to get the critic to discover, to rediscover his love for food, to reawaken his passion. And here it's the inverse, mm. to reawaken the passion within the artist. But here, whereas Ratatouille does it in a whimsical way, uh, we're doing it here with killings and suicide and cheeseburgers, and it's fucking awesome. Yeah, you know, I was so it hoping felt you like were gonna... a reverse ratatouille. I was so hoping you were going to say it was slamming salmon, but 
It wasn't. <laughs> uh, I, I actually, I, you know what? I know you like ratatouille because of the way you pronounce ratatouille. I, 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 oh, I'm gushing. Ignore that guy. Ignore the gush. Um, I, <laughs> Jesus. This is the this fucking episode. <laughs> Damn it. Hold on. This Wait, is the rat tattooy uh, of Love of Cinema episodes. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what the rat and Jeff's pulling, but I thought but about this there. because <laughs> I thought I didn't think about it because I for some reason Midsummer was in my head, and then as soon as they put the the s'mores thing on everybody and they just accepted it, or Dave, I'm not spoiling anything, but as, as soon as they did that We're in and spoilers, then the fire, I was like, this is this is Midsummer. <laughs> in Dave, Midsummer they movie. turn it's, everybody it's into really life-size grilled cheeses. That would have been hilarious. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> put this fucking cheese on. Um, <laughs> I love that Matt does not have the stream deck operating right now. Okay, um, but I thought going, going here's, where, here's where I thought about it. Here's where I thought about Ratatouille. So Rafe, Rafe finds I didn't know how he was gonna die. You knew he was gonna die. They, they talked about it, but like he wasn't gonna die like the sous chef, and he wasn't gonna die like everybody else. So how was he gonna die? And it would be like if Ego, even though even though he's the chef, not the critic, it would be like if Ego ate the ratatouille at the end, had that visceral experience, and then just walked into the flames right afterwards. <laughs> right. That's I will never I get thought. another ratatouille the fact that he was like, like this. You're all going to die, but I, I believe in this so much that I'm actually going to die not only first, by choice, mm -hmm. because and, I'm so happy and, right now. And, and that's Remy the rat, rat is sitting on a boat, eating a fucking Big Mac, watching him And Remy the rat's going, knock yourselves out. My life expectancy is like three years anyway, so have fun, people. <laughs> No, Remy <laughs> dies. No, uh, Remy's Remy dead lives now. That movie forever, came out 15 it. years ago. The movie's no, he's, he's gotta alive. go. He's dead. He's still, no, still alive. I no, 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 no. Don't crush no, my no. dreams. Oh, he's like Guys, a ghost, like so Gusto, good. and they float around together. I love that. <laughs> I don't want to wrap it up because I want to keep talking about Matt with Matt and Dave. But let's let's go around really quick and let's say our favorite moments in the movie. Uh, I need to shout out Mark, my friend, really quick. And I emailed him because I don't have it. I thought I had his number. And he must have a new number or something, but like I still had his email because he was so good. While he was already like doing TV shows, a friend of mine had a reel club where we would film scenes just to like boost up our reels. Like in case like we didn't want to be in that situation where like the best footage you have was from years ago. So we would just get together, write scenes for each other and film them. And if they were good, add them to our reels. But he didn't need that. So he was just like a part of mine. And it was so nice and generous and unnecessary. So I like reached out to him and I was like, you're the fucking best. I'm so happy Very for cool. you. Meanwhile, and he's sitting there. Going, how the fuck does this guy keep finding me? It's a funny. So he responded too quickly. <laughs> <laughs> if he didn't respond so, if he responded two days later, I would have Jeff's thought like, that. That's but he so funny. This right guy away. still has like, a hotmail account. Yeah, that's right. Right. yeah. yeah anyway. it's my hotmail. Yeah, fuck both of you, fuck you, both fuck yourself. Um, but I reached out because because as soon as this happened, I thought this, and it's true, and, and it, it ended up kind of getting. Because the movie was so good, thank Mark Mylod. You did such a fucking awesome job. I, I kind of hope he becomes like the American. Who's the guy who does Doctor Who in Sherlock? Who's the guy that's that's that plays Benedict Sherlock's Kimovich? brother? Kimovich? No, that plays Sherlock's brother in oh. the Sherlock series. Oh, you're talking Mark. about it's another Mark, right? Yes, Mark. Oh God, it's not. I almost said Mark Rylance, your favorite fucking person in the world. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna, I'm him, gonna talk about Mark Jesus, Rylance very soon. I saw the trailer for Bones and All, and I was like, "Fuck me!" I'm gonna talk about <laughs> Mark Rylance very soon. Um, I forget his name, but um, I'm looking him up now. I want him to. Be, I want. I want Mark Mylod to Jeez, turn. It's a lot quieter the than when John does it. That's what she says. Oh yeah, sorry guys. Fucking like, John sending like a telegraph in a World War II movie yeah. as the episode's yeah. going. He's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and we talk, yeah. we talk about time. Okay, what the fuck was I talking about? I was talking about um. Oh Mark. Oh my favorite moment. Dude, where am I? Mark Gaddis is that <laughs> fucking says, guy's name. Mark Gaddis. I knew it's another Mark. Mark. And maybe only film people would have would have appreciated this as much as I did. And I'm not even really a film person by default. Thank you to you people. But Mark has the the, the tech bros, you know, they, they were a little caricature, but like he had this line early on where I forget what they were talking about. But out of nowhere, he just goes, we're really pathetic, aren't we? And rather than cut to the response, they just hold on Mark. And the response comes in. was like, yeah, we really are. We should like, kill ourselves or something. And everybody in the whole theater laughed, but they held on Mark. And I just reached out. I thought it was so funny that, like, rarely does the setup get the laugh. But because they held on him, they get the laugh. And that was really one of the biggest laughs in the theater that I got. Yes. It was just that, so it, that first I mean, it's because the setup was the joke. Right. Now, of course, that was taught that. by that was taught by Hong Chao, who came up to them and said, these are tortillas. That was one of oh, the biggest God. ones, yeah. too. I also thought it was but, funny and ironic that the finance bros wanted bread. The thing they lacked was yep. bread. 
And I yes! thought that was fucking awesome. That <laughs> is satire. And, and again, my she, satire. she stole that as well. It was like, no. Just nope, one nope. word. Own the scene. <laughs> no. So do you have any in your food? He's like, I didn't get any food. He's like, yes, Dude, Hong Chow was okay, fucking awesome. And yeah. she doesn't well, just your... do the comedic bits. She's got a great, you know, tussle yeah. sit with Anya yeah. Taylor-Joy with yeah. the knife uh, in Chef's apartment. Yeah. That was great. Like, Love that she moment. Was funny and, she somehow ruled. managed to be funny and sinister at the same time. She yes. Was, uh, she was amazing. Yes. Yeah. It's the true believer. That's what it is. That yeah. archetype is so, is like, there's something funny about it, but it could turn on a fucking dime. Yeah. What's your favorite moment in the movie? It's a comedic moment. Let's say comedic My moment. My favorite comedic moment, hands down, is when the fucking, the magazine guy is in the chicken coop. And it's just, <laughs> I love Mark Mylod. He doesn't move the camera. He's like, yeah. fuck it. It's locked off. We're going to have the guy reach in through the hole yeah. to hand him his bite. And it was just staged so perfectly. That was knockout my favorite gag in the movie. Loved it. That's good. Yeah, that that was probably that that might have been my my audience's biggest laugh. Dave, um, I mean, yeah, definitely that one. But also when she turns up and stands up and claps back. Yeah, that, that was, was great. Yeah, that was Any other- that was definitely an old shit moment. It's like this could go anywhere from here. Honestly, I want to talk about every single moment in this movie, but we got to move on. We got to you know we got we have to keep keep going we do keep it chicken. also how we'll, cute we'll was young ray fines in his like <laughs> old pictures i was like he does yeah. not look like an american kid at a hamburger restaurant yeah. he looks like a european soap star it's like <laughs> so good i was like he's flipping burgers i was like no he's not <laughs> <laughs> anything else any other meat on the bones no pun intended yeah there's a fucking pun intended there you go anything else that you guys want to mention that we didn't get to Anything else uh, you want to get off the chest? No, I, I'm good with this. I think go see it. Definitely go see it. It's fun. Again, I think people, I hope people have seen it by this point if they've listened this March, but much, but it fucking, it's fucking awesome. Tell your friends to see it, people. And see it with a crowd. It's yeah. great, man. Take your friends. It's a good so movie. Fun go with, with the crowd. crowd. Yeah. Go with go your with friends. I had anxiety movies. during some points of it, but the crowd helped me because it was, yeah. You know, this is one of those was, movies that it helps to have an audience. You want them along with the ride. But they see that to me is a point for horror because it works just like a horror movie yeah you want the audience there with you kind of taking the ride with you um and it felt it played a lot like a horror movie even though i'm I'm gonna agree with dave it was more of a thriller that works for comedy as well like the more more people you have around you that can laugh at it yeah like that is maybe thriller wins maybe thriller wins it's 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 a a lot of satirical black comedy thriller it just reinvents (laughs) itself about four times it's like it's like madonna (laughs) buzzing all of us it's like madonna all right, friends. Thank you so much. Wait, wait. Do I hear? I hear. A... Oh my God! That's right, people. That means it is time for our final segment of the evening, which the is of course songs. what you've been watching, where we let everybody know what we've been watching. So I think actually today, what I would love to do, we always start with Dave. We'll start with Dave, and then me, and then Matt. I would love you to go to fucking town because I know love you've it. seen a whole lot of shit. Love it. Dave, what have you seen this week? Um, actually, I watched it just before uh, tonight, before we did recorded this. Um, Netflix has a new film with Jason Momoa called Slumberland. I saw the trailer. It's, it is a fucking amazing for a family adventure comedy film. Like, if you've got a whole family together this Thanksgiving, you're full, you're full of chicken or turkey or whatever, everybody grab a couch, put this on. There's not a bad thing for the kids in it. It's, it's fucking amazing. It's great. It's fun. Shit. Yeah, how is how is Momoa in that? Does he bro down? Is he like, what's up, brother? He does, does both. He do, like his wrestler thing. He does both. <laughs> okay. There's a little there's a little bit of him coming through, but he does some acting in this one. Oh, okay. Yeah. You know, you know my coming. favorite thing is movie stars that are both surprised they're movie stars, love being movie stars, and I said both. I'm gonna add a third thing. Thankful to everybody else for making them movie stars. And I feel like Jason Momoa hits all. Oh, three. absolutely! He's surprised, I mean, yes, loves it, and he's so thankful to all of us and that we are movie when stars. James, he's like, "I'll stop if you want me to," but like, I'm gonna keep going because thank you. When James Gunn called him for that one scene in Peacemaker, he was just like, "Yep, I'm on board." Yeah, didn't even oh, have, didn't even. So yeah, I won't say anymore. Sorry, watch Peacemaker, everyone. Watch Peacemaker. Oh, it's okay. I've seen it twice I now. I put down his fucking energy drink, and he got in his truck, and he's like, "Hell yeah, brother!" And then he <laughs> rode over into that oh, scene. Oh my god! <laughs> oh my god! I need to write down what I. Oh, I watched. I watched Blowout, which our co-host, um, I reached out to him about it because I, I had a, a De Palma hole. Because if we get, you know, I, I rewatched the ILM like the Industrial Light like Magic for. episode. <laughs> My De Palma hole needed to be filled. Well, that's gonna play differently in different markets for sure. Um, 
<laughs> Sorry, Dave. <laughs> For Dave's laugh that you couldn't hear, I'm going to buzz him again because he's about to spit beer all over his microphone. That nearly happened. Um, <laughs> Because I knew he did, I knew he did Scarface and Untouchables, which I had seen, and then I, I knew, I remember he did something in the '70s, which turned out to be Carrie. But I was like, I feel like he's always in that, like Spielberg and and um, yeah. Coppola and Scorsese. He's always in that group with um, uh, Lucas. Like they're always hung out together. Like why is De Palma in that group? And De Paul and Blowout in 1981 with John Travolta is really great. So I saw that. I saw another movie which I'm not done yet, but I'm gonna. I'm gonna. It's a three-hour movie, so I get a pass, and I'll mention it <laughs> next week. But I saw Bones and All. I saw it in theaters, oh, and I'm, I'm not gonna say anything because uh, I have a feeling it's gonna come up in conversation. And right now, it's still in limited release. I know that because I got a thing afterwards that was like, they want to know what you think of the movie. You can get a five dollar gift card if you send your response. Oh, it wasn't so, it? Wasn't like, one I, of the five fucking things you get from ANC for booking a ticket in the app? No, no, it was in. Okay. They give a physical copy, and they they paid people to stand <laughs> outside and give us these little forms to say cool. what we thought. So it's in limited release, but. I fucking love Mark Rylance. He's oh, in this God. movie, and I forgot yeah. he was in it. I fucking love him. He's in some of my favorite the movies of the show, right? It's Mark Rylance. I mean, he's got to be in that character list. Like... <laughs> he's got it. You saw Phantom of the Open. You saw it, Dave, and you oh, saw the God, Open. Yeah. We've seen three Mark Rylance movies this year. That's more there than anybody else. Where on the there was planet. like a run of Love of Cinema episodes that were all Mark Rylance movies, and I was like, "Are you fucking kidding again?" When I was on your episode, you were like, "Who is this guy?" And you were like, "Oh, you know, he's that guy in Don't Look Up." Oh, he's that guy in the spot. It's like he's Ready he's Player guy, One is still one of my favorites. Ready, his his Ready Player One role is awesome. Yeah, he ran the yeah. Globe Theater in London for like two decades. People, he's the best actor on the planet. Matt, you've seen so much shit, and you haven't been on an episode oh, in a while. God. So, what do you what do you where do you want to start? And Dave's seen all of them, so you I will start fun. with new stuff first. Uh, I recently caught, and I should say. <sighs> I don't want to sign up for any more goddamn streaming services, okay, everybody? Just a general note. But I did go to the Roku website because it's uh, the only goddamn place you can watch Weird, the Al Yankovic yes. oh, I want to see it so bad. And I have to tell you, um, it's worth it. You don't have to sign up. You don't even have to give them an email. Like, if you go to the Roku site, it, the movie just fucking plays. <laughs> it's just like, hello, hi, welcome, thank you for coming. Um Weird the Al Yankovic story. <laughs> I feared what happens with a lot of SNL movies, which is, you know, because this is based on a funnier die sketch. And it's like, hey, here's a joke that we made that's three minutes long. And now we're going to try to spread this shit out over two hours. And I was like, this shit's going to run itself into the ground. No. Nope. Weird the Al Yankovic story is so much more than that. It owes a lot to Walk Hard. Um, oh. It feels a lot like Walk Hard. Whereas I think Walk Hard is just content being a comedy. Weird the Al Yankovic story aspires, just like Weird Al does, to parody everything. So many movie genres are parodied. So many movies are parodied. <laughs> um, we, sometimes within the same scene, which is amazing. Daniel Radcliffe is fucking awesome. He is I living his this guy's best life. He is so good, and he's yeah. making so many weird, ballsy choices. Yes. Evan Rachel Wood is great in it, too, as Madonna. Madonna's character takes a big, weird turn in the movie, which is kind of awesome, and she owns it. Um, if you're on the fence about weird, go watch it. You can even be a savage and watch it on your goddamn phone on the Roku app if you want. Um, but it's great and so worth your time. So weird, the Al Yankovic story. Uh, the other thing I want to call out uh, for all my horror people is I finally saw Terrifier 2 and I loved <laughs> it. I loved it. It was appropriate, too, because I saw it right before Thanksgiving and there's a horrid gag involving mashed potatoes uh -huh. and a woman's open yes. face that I yes. um, will haunt my dreams forever. I, so uh, the, it was you know great. The funniest it was thing? like I've, uh, I've had beers without the clown. Like Really? Yeah. <laughs> we we have a connection. Yeah. Um our buddy Mr. Suspicious is friends with David Howard Thornton. Uh -huh. yeah. And he actually might we're trying to get him to come on our show because we love art. And uh, we are so we we both love Terrifier too. We had such a great time with it. It's like three stooges with gore. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. And I think it's so cool that in an age where you've got a horror icon like Michael Myers, who's been around for 50 years, Michael Myers got fuck, got his pants whooped yeah. by a $250,000 yep. movie that and is the, just the, coming out of nowhere. The meme that came out today was like, I'd rather be killed by Michael Myers 10 times than by Arthur Clown once. Yes. <laughs> we have a new horror icon. Yeah. Someone new is he, here and he's he, great. Yeah. He came out of the New York scene because we posted because uh, somebody who's been on our podcast before, Marcus, um, posts about it every day. So I don't I don't know what his I was connection is I with was almost friends, an extra in that. 
Yeah. And, oh, shit. And, and yeah. I'll post about it. And I'll have friends be like, I was in a reading with him. Like, he's a New York actor. And he's just, he's just like a journeyman That's actor. Great. And yeah. so it's so cool that people are dressing up as him as Hall- for Halloween. He is like, you root for this motherfucker that got cast as as. And it's art. amazing like, because it's so he's doing, he, it's a completely silent part. Mm. Yeah. This guy's doing it all with his fucking face. Yeah. That's what's amazing. People dressed up as There's him. There's no excuse for, for mine unless awesome you're going to take that? someone's like, face off. <laughs> Six months ago, he was probably like going to bed alone, sad, and then all of a sudden, like three weeks now later, he's people are underneath dressed a pile up as of naked him women for Halloween <laughs> and going, "I'm yes. Arthur Clown, motherfuckers." You know. I hope we get ten more terrifiers. I can't wait. Let's get real weird right. with well, it. I'm definitely sure there's a part I, three coming. Yeah, they've said three is coming. He has an idea for three. Good on him. Yeah. All Good right, on Matt, him. Let it rip. What, what other shit? You apparently, you I'm, I'm going to be an extra in that one. Dude, you should get be in, in it, Dave. I hope Please I get be killed. terrified. I hope I get killed. <laughs> um, other stuff I've seen that's new. I want to give a shout out to Confess Fletch, the new Fletch movie with John Hamm. A lot of people. Um, I've heard yes, good things. I saw the original I love, and I was not a fan. I love the original Fletch, but the second Fletch is awful. Fletch yeah. lives. It is a barn fire. But John Hamm, like as good as Chevy Chase is in the role, it feels like he was just keeping it warm. John Hamm owns this fucking part now. Uh, it, the, the shitty <laughs> thing is, John it's Hamm just does. a random VOD movie. It's not on yeah. any streamer. Yep. Nobody's going to see it. Nobody's watching this movie, but it's fucking great because it's not just a comedy. It's a competent mystery. It's a great private eye movie with balls. It's got some great jokes in it. Greg Matola, who made Super Bad, and Paul directed it. It's fucking awesome. Confess Fletch had a lot of fun with that. Um, and then I just want to shout out all the old school shit I've been watching. When I had COVID, I did a double feature immediately. Everybody should go do this immediately. <laughs> go to Hulu and watch Young Guns and Young Guns 2. Because <laughs> I'll make awesome. you famous. I'll make you famous, dude. <laughs> Emilio Estevez is so fucking awesome. All the cast. Emilio yeah. Estevez. A murder. A, a, and I was like, when I was in, Emilio. When I was in high school, when I was in high school, I got the I got the soundtrack for Young Guns too. And whenever I had a creative writing assignment, I'd get up at four o'clock in the morning, brew a, use my coffee machine to brew a giant pot of tea instead of coffee, and I'd put in the Young Guns two soundtrack on repeat and just bust out this fucking twenty page assignment. Yes. It was like that. Dave. That was, that was Dave's Adderall. Yes. Yeah. Young Guns too is Young Dave's Guns Adderall. Two is Adderall. <laughs> Dude, it's got a murderous row of like every fucking person you love from the '80s: Charlie Sheen, Emilio Estevez, goddamn Christian Slater, Dermot Mulroney shows up. Uh, random awesome uh, badasses like Jack Palance, William Peterson from Manhunter. Oh, um, it's awesome and it's filled with great character moments. Uh, definitely catch Young Guns and Young Guns Two. Uh, and I also want to call out, I randomly started, I, I was on another, I was like, I'm whoring it up all over this week. I was on another pod that I won't give a shout out to yet because I don't know if they've announced me yet. But I had to watch <laughs> a couple things over there uh, for them. I watched, I rewatched 1917 and Skyfall, oh, those both are Sam f- Mendes films. Mm-hmm. Our first episode was 1917. We talked about it our first Dude. ever episode. This is like, Dave, what is this, 160 now? This is 162. We're doing yeah, right you guys now. are Jesus. You guys Number are Number one was 1917. Sorry, Matt, please continue. So I rewatched 1917, and, and the gag, this has become a gag on our show, is that the first time I saw 1917, I saw it at the Alamo as I was so, as these yeah. poor kids are dying with their guts hanging out. I'm there stuffing my face with a flatbread pizza yeah. and like watching these poor uh, bastards uh, die. Just right. Yeah. Just and like a politician. Just yeah, I really yeah. felt like I felt like the rich. I felt yeah. like the rich in uh in the menu. But uh, 1917 was just, Jesus. This time I made sure not to eat. I was like, don't order a pizza. Don't do anything dumb. Just watch the movie. And I'm glad I did. Skyfall as well. Um, I was. It's also kind of making me a little excited for this new Sam Mendes movie that's coming out, Empire of Light. I, so, um, I famously went to a, a double feature of um, Skyfall and Pitch Perfect uh, just before I left Australia. I know. It was the drive-in. We all turned wow. up the drive-in. Oh, and, I see. And, okay, uh, okay. Yeah, it was, they had Skyfall and Pitch Perfect. And I I was like, oh, you know, I'll get through Pitch Perfect and then we'll we'll get to Skyfall. And I l- turned out to fucking love Pitch Perfect and get bored as shit with Skyfall at the drive-in. I don't know what happened there. Okay, well, I don't support what you said about Skyfall, but I will <laughs> yeah, back I'm, you, I like Dave. Skyfall, Dave. Mm-hmm. Get the Dave. Fuck out. Dave, you still have a drink buzzer, so I buzz myself. Get Dave, the fuck out of here. I'm buzzing you also, but also... <laughs> Dude, Pitch Perfect is good. Yeah, it really <laughs> the is. First one, the first one, especially. I, I mean, yeah. The second one holds two, up. Two yeah. as well was pretty second good. second one holds up. Yeah. With Flula. The third one, yeah, Flula. Flula. fucking Flula travesty. Flula is so good. Mm. I haven't seen part three yet. Don't. But, uh... Oh, oh, 
Christmas. This is a good Christmas song in part three. <laughs> Jesus. Sky Skyfall's not bad. Skyfall's Skyfall's got I'll good stuff. I'll rep for Pitch Perfect. Sometimes it's kind of fun. Dave, do you get this too? Like sometimes your wife will be like, "Let's watch this." And you're like, "I'm not into this," and then you're watching it and you're like, "Fucking girly movies are awesome." Yeah. Dude, oh, dude yeah. I get that all the time. I'm like, this fucking oh, yeah. girly movie's good. I forgot. I watched the Sex Lies and College Girls because a, a, a now ex girlfriend of mine really liked the first season. I was like, you know what? I'm fucking in. I, I thought it would be too girly, but now that I accepted the fact that it's girly, it's pretty Hell fun. Yeah. It it's knows, like a good girly drink. They taste good, guys. They taste good. The guys, movies are good. The, Cosmos That's why, the whole reason good. I started watching Broad choice, City. But if you throw one down my throat, not bad. Yeah, Broad man. City. Dude, Broad City's fun. Fuck yeah. Fuck yeah, man. Um, I also rewatched. I watched a ton of shit. I also did a double, an adventure double. Um, this is why we, while we also had COVID, we were like, let's watch Cliffhanger on Hulu. Oh, you both had COVID God. at the same time. That's yes, great. We both because it sucks when one gets okay. That, oh, you had a dream. This is a dream. Yeah. So a we writer were like, and an it. artist have COVID. What do you do? Yeah. You watch twenty five like, movies. This is great. I was like, let's watch. And you know me. I'm, I'm like, we we basically split it up. So I'll pick something, and then my wife picks something. I'm like, and I'm like, let's fucking watch something with Stallone. She's like, oh, okay. And then we decide <laughs> on Cliffhanger, and we both enjoy it so much. That now she's like, I want to watch another adventure movie or an action movie, but let's go hey. the opposite way. Let's get some sand. And we started looking and we started, we randomly watched Sahara, the movie with Matthew oh, McConaughey. Yeah. And we enjoyed the hell, That's hell of it. fun. It's really good. Yeah. Dude, Steve Zahn is so good in that movie. I love He's Steve like Zahn. a fucking Looney Tunes character that's in the yeah. middle of an action movie. It's so good. He made his um, Spy Kids money. He's doing good or whatever that fuck is. Yeah, he's yeah. doing great. Yeah. He's still in the White Lotus. He's doing good. Uh, yeah, so Cliffhanger, Sahara. And the other thing I wanted to point out was, and I think, Dave, you might appreciate this. I introduced my wife to Firefly. She had never oh seen it. Oh, my God. I was like, let's watch Firefly and let's end I have with some phone Serenity. calls to make anyway. You guys go ahead okay, and talk that's, about that's yeah, a, okay. <laughs> Dave yeah. and I are just going to bro down, bro down. That's a, that's a good pick. It's like, yeah, it's because Serenity was originally the the entire of season two packed into like yes. a movie. And it... it and I, I loved, I mean, I, I love Firefly, but I noticed something and, and I want to get your take on this, especially now that we're about to get a new Guardians of the Galaxy holiday mm-hmm. special. I was like, hmm, James Gunn owes a little uh, explanation, I think, because so much of Guardians DNA is in Firefly. Like, I mean, even down to like the, the thing character is, though, archetypes, Guardi- the like, quips, wasn't the, the Guardians, action, the design. Wasn't Guardians of the Galaxy like comic out before Firefly? Yes, but this iteration of these characters that we know now, they're not so much like they were in the comics, right? I mean, it, there's, there's similarities, and I, but also I think, you know what, if you took that formula, because they had a cast that gelled really, really well, and that's why Firefly was popular from the start, like that cast just looked like they've been working together for five seasons already. And like he oh, managed, so he managed to generate so that in a movie cast. So, you know, more, more power to him. If he jumped on the back of Firefly, Firefly, I just good felt on him. like there was a lot, and I love James Gunn. I'm like a big James Gunn fan, but I was like, dude, there are a lot of similarities here where it's really feeling like Maybe, this I felt mean, like I'm the, sure he's a the fan. Bo- the the test drive of Guardians almost. I'm sure he's a fan. But, um, I'm sure it was like a, a fuck you to like you know make make more of this. Otherwise, I'm gonna do it. Oh, I'm sure. Like, There's got to be some kind of connect there. There's like, some connect. It anyway, was such a good it show. Felt a lot like Guardians. Like Fox was so um, mean to that show. Oh, they fucking aired it out of order. Out or they of order. Fucking air episodes. Yeah. yeah. Like, how are you missing? This is like real shit. How are you dumping two episodes and then putting on like, yeah, we'll just play episode five because we're yeah. dicks. The origin you know, story like, was the episode seven. Thing I could think of. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Fuck that. Anyway, the series holds up, although it was very funny to go from like this dinky SD uh, yeah. series that's got a lot of heart with like some really bad fake spaceship walls to Serenity, which is like a no shit fifty million dollar. Yeah, movie they build the whole fucking that has ship. Huge sets. <laughs> yeah, that's like you're like Jesus Christ. It's like your fucking poor friend went from like having a flip phone to having like this fucking new iPhone that does all this crazy what shit. Yeah, and you're like, dude, you got rocketed into the future just now, man. <laughs> <laughs> this guy, this guy is fucking going. Now live in the future. You live in the future. Um. Also, I want to shout out a documentary. Speaking of Disney, that I caught. I was a big fan of Werewolf by Night. Oh, and I caught oh, the yeah. documentary Director by Night, which is about Did Michael Giacch- uh, Giacchino yeah. making Werewolf by Night. It, it was really good. And apparently really good. Um, the the other character that was the monster in that is getting his own special event now as well. Nice. Oh, really? No shit. Yeah, man, man name, thing. Right? Yeah. Man thing. Man yeah. thing. Fuck yeah. Yeah. Dude, we're going to get man thing. And I, I've heard rumblings that we're going to get a Silver Surfer presentation. That's, uh, yeah, that's kind of been like, 
Yeah, oh, maybe. No. Is that yeah, not true? Know. God damn it. It might be. It might so not. I don't, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know about that one. Dude, Disney's on a roll lately, man. I'm psyched about Willow. Fucking love yeah. Willow. Oh, I'm hell yeah. Willow. Yeah. And I'm a little... It, nostalgia's getting the best of me. I'm going to tune in for this Santa Claus TV show. Although it's too early yeah. for Santa. It's too early for Santa. I feel like yeah. Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade when Next Santa week. comes out is like yeah. the official also, beginning of when Santa can come. 100%. There's also been a couple 100%. of red flags around that one. That's what I've heard. The Tim Allen this is getting like yeah. getting the best of it. The new Tim Allen. But Allen-ness, I'm like, fuck, yeah. man, come on. He was, he was much like cooler Claus. when he was just out of prison. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, dude. When he was just a coke smuggling comedian. <laughs> you were so much cooler when you were a cokehead. Uh, yeah, yeah so. his his mugshot is great. All right, um, we, we should probably wrap this up. <laughs> yeah, that's me, <laughs> fellas. Guys, oh, if you want more, to but... know, if you want to know what Matt has been watching on top of this, go to their page. It's on Instagram. We'll go ahead and, and shout it out in our link, of course, because we want you to come to us first because this is our podcast. But we will, pr- I promise you, they're like our our podcast brothers or sisters, depending on You're like our the brother day. pod, yeah. And so we, I promise we will shout them out. Find out all this other shit that Matt, he's a big physical media fan too. So if you love getting your Blu-rays and stuff, you got to check it out. And thank I thank you so much again, Matt. We can't thank you so enough for, uh, this is I like 48 hours notice. Here. This is great. I felt like this was all good. We're one giant s'more together, guys. We are s'mores together, <laughs> and, I, and I feel the love, man. I feel the heat, you know? Uh, you feel the love of cinema? This is what I'm talking about. I these, feel the fucking love This is what I'm talking yes. about with these stuffy critics. Jesus. They get up there, and they try to explain why a movie is good or bad, and it's like, how do you feel? What do you think? I want you to have fun liking movies. Yeah. Don't tell me why Fuck it's good off or with bad. Your buzzwords. Tell me how you fucking feel. As Jeff says, from the gut. From the gut. I like the, I like how you do the that. From the fucking gut. gut it's like it's like an eighties cop show when you say that. From the gut, man. I'm like, yeah, oh he's gonna fucking God. bust somebody from the gut, man. That's right. Meanwhile, I'm over here. I'll stop you up. Give me your badge and gun. He's never said my last <laughs> name out loud, which is hilarious. Dude, yeah, that took so me much. a second. I was like, who's Oster? Oh, okay. Who the fuck is he talking about? That's this German motherfucker that you're listening to. I'm American, people. But it's the World Cup, so everybody pretends to be from wherever their great-grandfather <laughs> came from. Let's fuck go, you, FIFA. people. Fuck FIFA. Fuck, fuck FIFA. FIFA. I actually hope the ratings are terrible, but like the good, you know that it, like, it goes well. Yeah. Um, hey, I support the players, but FIFA can suck my can radio you imagine, edit. Can you <laughs> imagine dick. spending... It's fine. Dicks. Can you imagine spending 10 years building stadiums that people die building and then two days before the event saying, oh, by the way, no beer. <laughs> yeah. What the fuck? What the After fuck we that? already know that you gave bags of money to all the voters. It's, this is literally in Lincoln where Tim Blake Nelson runs around offering people jobs because they're going to lose their <laughs> because they're like, you know, you want to end slavery. But we also know that it's going to cost you the election. So you can be this job afterwards. That's literally right now. FIFA literally was running around with bags of money going. We know you're going to get fired from FIFA, but you'll have three million dollars. Like, I'm, that's literally I'm laughing because I've never seen Lincoln. <laughs> get Dave. <laughs> Dave, it's not in Steve's best 10, but it's fucking Lincoln. Wow. No Lincoln and no Midsommar Dave, for Dave. We, Dave, in our apartment, we had a picture of Daniel Day-Lewis over our couch. You sat underneath him. You I never didn't. It fell down and nearly fucking killed me. Yeah, because John didn't spend a lot of money to frame it, but none of us wanted to spend any money to frame it. <laughs> He got the picture. He should frame it. Why do I need to frame his picture? It doesn't make any sense. We got a shitty frame and it fell. I don't know what you want. That's a fucking framed picture of Lincoln in you guys. No, it was actually Daniel Plainview, but still, yeah. like, come on. <laughs> All right, people. Thank Chris you so Dutch. much. Um, thanks again, Matt, for coming on. I got to pee so bad. So we're going to end this episode right it. here. Um, follow us on the link tree and we'll see you again soon, film fans. Thank you so much. Bye.